Hey folks, Jeff Little here getting ready to test another boat with the Torquedo Ultralight 1103 3 horsepower uh, direct drive silent motor with a really quick throttle response. This one is the Jackson Kilroy HD. The reason why I really think that that 3 horsepower motor is, is going to be good on this boat uh, is a couple things. For one, it's got no scupper holes. So scupper holes, even though it's a small um, inefficiency, I think it can add up. Uh, the other is that you can move that seat forward a good bit. I really want to set out today to figure out what's the perfect seating position. I know it's different for each boat, um, but I want a general sense of it. The better performing kayaks had a seat ratio, and by seat ratio I mean the percentage of the boat that is behind the seat. You know, so if it's 40% of the boat behind the seat pan, uh, that one has been performing fairly well. Want to get up to 44, 45%, those are your better performing kayaks. I don't know where the sweet spot is. We don't have boats in the market until now with this, uh, actually there's two different boats I think are, are good candidates to find out really what is the sweet spot. One is the new Canoe Pursuit, the other is the Jackson Kilroy HD. So I have a tape measure here that I'm gonna move, I'm gonna, you know, take measurements, what is the distance from the rear of the seat pan back, and I'm gonna make different um, adjustments, you know, loosening this, loosening the screw, sliding it forward, sliding it back, and figure out where exactly is the sweet spot. Today, we have perfect conditions. No wind, and uh, yeah, we're on, on nine tidal water. There's no current, no wind to help or hurt the uh, performance of this in, in really assessing what is the perfect seating position uh, for electric propulsion with a three horsepower electric motor. We're gonna find out. So let's start out with a good average measurement. Um, I'm gonna get the length of the, the whole boat here in a second, but what we're measuring is from the stern to the rear of the seat pan. That's at 70 inches divided by, and I'll get that, I'll get that length of what the whole boat is here in a minute, and that'll be one of our you know, one of our measurements, one of our seat ratio percentages. Then I'll move it to others and see which one gets the best top end speed. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, so 70 divided by 153. We're at about 45%, 46%. So let's give that a shot, see what happens. I may, I may adjust it forward just a hair to see, maybe we just start at 50%. So 153 times 0.5, I'm gonna take it up to 76.5. See what that, uh, what that gets. So let me go ahead and move the seat and we'll see where, um, where the, the rear of the seat pan directly in the middle of the boat gets us. Hey, we are underway. One of the things I had to do to balance the, uh, you know, the spacing of the foot control steering is I actually removed the, uh, the rod tubes. There are rod tubes on either side, and I put these, these foot control steering slides here on the side. So uh, removing the, the, the uh, rod tubes allowed me to keep my feet in here with these sliding foot pegs so I can steer it. So. Let's go ahead and uh, at the 50% mark, see what we get. We do have a little bit of cavitation because I have it weighted so far forward. I have not adjusted the, uh, the motor down enough, but once it's, once it's grabbing, so we're already at 4.7 at 188 watts. So let's see what happens here. We'll get this cranked up a little bit. Yeah, 4.6 miles per hour, 188 watts is, is good. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and mash it. So 
so we are at 6.5 mile per hour at 121 watts. Let's go ahead and make that adjustment. So 6.5 1121. We'll make the adjustment moving the seat back to maybe 45% and see what happens. All right, so I already ran one test at 50% and as soon as I started adjusting things for the second run at 45% of the, the boat behind the, the seat, I realized that this is not the functional stern. The functional stern is really here because of this, this overhang. So I'm just to keep it uniform, I'm measuring from the center of this hole. Uh, when you get the stern squat, that's pretty much the end of where the boat's going to be. On the front side, we're going to take it up to, we're going to say the, the back side of the grab handle, because I think when I have this mashed down, we're going to call it a 146 inch boat. So I'll put the, the seat in the 50% um, position where half of the boat is behind you know, the, the midline of, of that 146 inches, then move it back to 45%, then 40%, 35 and 30. And we're gonna see which of that, in that continuum of between 50% behind down to 30% behind. And you do have some, some boats out there that have the fixed seat position around 30%, and those are the poor performing the better ones I've seen are in that 45 range. I don't know how much closer to 50 we're gonna get uh, that we find a sweet spot. We'll try it. All right, 73 or 73 inches is the 50% mark. So I'm gonna start there and work my way down. If that 50% is the, is the best top end speed I can get, I'll go up and check it at 55%. But I'm guessing it's somewhere between that 50 and 45%. Let's find out. Steer this thing straight before I drop the hammer on it and uh, see what we get. Ready, set, go. I tell you that clock jumped straight up. So we got pretty solidly 6.5 miles per hour. Just back off of there. <laughs> that ended abruptly. And uh, we'll go back, take it to the 45% and so on. I will pause to acknowledge that seating position isn't the only factor. It's just that in my testing, I found that it's the most important in terms of the weight balance and getting that, getting the boat trimmed. The other factors are the hull design, the overall weight of the boat, and the length of the boat. Longer boats do better. Lighter boats do better. But seating position is something that we should be focusing on. It's just had the the biggest impact in top end speed. So 45% certainly feels more natural in terms of the leg length, even with everything I've done to move the foot control steering forward. So let's go ahead and see what 45% does for us. Again, quick jump up. Solidly, I was gonna say six five, but actually it's wavering between six four and six five. You know, we had we had six point five on there solidly at fifty percent, and at forty five percent, it kind of it was mostly six point five, but it was back and forth. So I'm gonna give that a fraction. Call it, you know, six point four five. Somewhere in between. All right, let's move it to 40% and see what happens. All right, I've adjusted that screw again. 
Move the seat, and we are at see 58.4, and that is our number for 40 percent. Let's give it a go. So, for reference sake, 39 percent is the the average of of all the kayaks. I think I've done. I think I have data on like 18 different kayaks uh, with the ultralight. 39%, so a little bit less than where we are with this seating, 40% seating position. Uh, that is, that's sort of the industry average. This is where most seats are um, on average. The ones that do better are up near 45%. Ones that do worse are near 30, so, uh, or 32, 35, somewhere in there. So let's give this a shot, see what the, uh, the industry average seating position gives us. Three, two, one, mash. And it jumps right up. I mean, it's, the bow is up quite a bit. And uh, let's see, we're at 6.4. And we're, we're not going as fast as we had been. 6.3. Six three six four. So I'll give that a you know a fraction cause you know six point three five or something like that. We've lost quite a bit of speed just going from forty five percent to forty. Let's see what thirty five does next. All right, here we are at fifty five point one. I don't know that I'm going to go all the way to 30%. Uh, we're going to try the 35% and see what happens from there. Uh, then we may go back up to this 55%. I don't know if I can fit up there, though. I mean, at 50%, I was jammed way up there. But maybe we'll just take another look at 50% and get the range at all those at all the speeds and graph that out. So, incidentally... Seating position is sort of arbitrary. What we're really measuring here is how flat does the boat run at speed. When the seat is further back, the bow is up more. When the seat is further forward, the bow is down. Three horsepower does a lot of stern squat. So, you know, the other part of the weight balance equation is your gear. If you put a lot of gear weight behind you, it rides like this. If you put some in front of you, it rides more like this. So, all right, let's see. I'm spooking fish out here. Let's see what 35% looks like. Ready, set, go. Well, I will tell you already, you can look and see is way up there, and we're at 6.3, so 6.2, between 6.2 and 6.3, we're going to call it 6.25. It's not just speed that you're losing, it's, it's efficiency, it's, hey, how many, you know, can you go 28 miles at 4.8 miles per hour can you know at every mile per hour um, You know, there's a certain efficiency and riding with your your nose up You know the bow of the boat up and the stern down not efficient So get your efficiency back get your weight forward And hopefully we can start designing kayaks with the seating forward so that it feels more natural I think wider in the front Clean release, long tail in the back, gear storage up front, all of that plays into it. So I'm going to move it back to 55, see what we can get. I don't know if I can <laughs> keep it straight at 55%, but we'll see. Okay, I I'm out of room. Seriously. Uh, we're at 77, almost 78. We'll call it 77.7. .7. That's as close as we're going to get to the 80.3. Um, let me try it. 77.7. .7. Okay, so 
by now I'm in this absurd position and it's hard to steer because I'm running out of room. But we're somewhere between, I'm a little bit uneasy about doing this, somewhere between 50 and 55 percent. I will keep coming back to gear distribution does the same thing. Getting your gear to not be behind you, but to be somewhere out in front of you, your gear weight, your water weight, your food weight, whatever it is, your battery weight, anything. Okay. Yeah, we're moving. Six five, solidly. Six six. Yeah, we hit. I think I bumped to the record button there again while I was doing that. But we hit between six five and six six. So there's more room to to go. I don't know how much of that I recorded. Um, with me jammed all the way forward, I got my best speed. So I'm not sure what this means in terms of boat design, but if you really look at it, this being the most efficient weight balance, and honestly it'll be set off even more once, once guys put the, the fishing gear back here. They put 80, 120, 160 pounds of gear back there. You know, weight forward of the anglers is an even bigger deal. So. It does say that the industry's gotten it wrong for kayak fishing. The weight shouldn't be back at 35 or even 40 percent. It should be somewhere forward. Um, certainly there's some designs you can do with the hull design to, to make that work better. Uh, one thing I, I definitely advocate for and I've seen it work with other um, inflatables in particular is having a twin tail design, sort of like the Solo Skiff, sort of like the Sea Eagle Fish Skiff, where you have the, the twin tail design, where the motor weight and the stern squat is up into the boat. Um, but overall, seating position forward is probably the quickest, easiest way to get there. Let's get one more look at that length behind the angler at the fastest speed, which I've called, you know, with this particular boat, touch 6.6. It's a lot of boat behind me. It's absurd, but it's what works.